Hi everyone, this is Mark again, and this video is for you to find out a little bit more about the uh, IELTS writing task uh, for the academic module. Now, this is an area where there can be a lot of difficulty getting up to that 7 level or higher. So hopefully this video will help you uh, do that. Um, just like all the videos I post, the focus here is to remind you to do the analysis of the data first. That is the most important thing. So remember, yes, take five minutes at the beginning of this part of the test. You're only going to have 20 minutes. Use that first five minutes to really analyze the graph. This is extremely important, and a lot of people forget to do this. The reason is that in order to get the higher score, one thing you definitely need to do is show the overall trend in the data. Not just that one thing increased or another thing decreased, but overall, what happened. And it's not always easy to find, especially if you don't practice this. So you need to find all those things. Do the overall numbers increase or do they decrease or do they stay the same? Remember, not changing is also a trend you need to find. Second, and that's what we're going to look at here, is organizing the data in a clear way, showing the trend and supporting it with the data. Don't just say the numbers, uh, that they increased, then decreased, then fluctuated. That's useful, but it's not the most important thing. So as I said, you want to take five minutes, identify the main trend, identify the micro trends, the smaller trends, and then organize your paragraphs. If you do that, 15 minutes is more than enough time to write your task. You need to be a really good analyst if you're trying to get that 7 or higher. Do not just describe the data. So let's start, as promised, with pie charts. Now, if you take a look here, you've got a pretty standard set of IELTS pie charts. Now, taking a look over here, you can see that we've got uh, charts giving information about ages of the population for Italy in two thousand, uh, Italy and Yemen, sorry, for 2000, and projections for 2050. And of course, summarize the information, select and report main features, and make comparisons where relevant. So the first thing to point out is 2050. That means the future. Now this is important because this is going to help you also improve your grammar score, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So we've got Yemen and Italy down here. We've got the data for 2000 as well as for 2050. So what I'd like you to do now is take five minutes, get out a piece of paper and a pencil, and make some notes. Overall, what do you see? What does the data tell you? Remember, you need to become an analyst, not just an English user. So you've got five minutes, press pause, and I'll see you after. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you uh, have paused it and actually done the analysis. This is very important if you're serious about the test. Now, one thing you've probably noticed, well, hopefully you noticed, is that both countries get older. When you look at Yemen in 2000, you can see that it's mostly a young country. Uh, over 50% of the people are 0 to 14 years old. So it's pretty young. There's a good number of people that are 15 to 59. You can see that here. And very few people are, are 60 or over. Then you compare that uh, to the future, you can see Yemen is older. So pe people 0 to 14 has decreased. The number of people 15 to 59 has increased. Now, this is a key thing. Yes, this is a small number. The people that are 60 and over in Yemen is still quite small, but compared to 3.6, 5.7 is still quite a big increase. That's more than a 30% increase. So that's worth noticing, although it is small. 
it is a noticeable increase relative to the original number. So that's one thing to look at. We then look at Italy, you can see big differences. For their uh, population that is 0 to 14, it's very small in comparison. One third of Yemen's population. 15 to 59 is a lot bigger. It's the biggest one, so that's a key point. It is the biggest. And finally, you can see that Italy has far more people in the 60-plus age range. Then in the future, things change a bit. That number over here that was 24.1 has nearly doubled. It's gone from 24.1 to 42.3. So it's a pretty major increase. As the birth rates have slowed down, you can see here 11.5 is a slight decrease for Italy. Uh, and finally, 15 to 59. Um, it's still the biggest group in Italy, and that's a key thing. In both, it's bigger. However, between, uh, between this age group, 60 plus, and 15 to 59, they've come a lot closer together. So you see, that's the type of analysis you need to pay attention to. Overall, both countries get older. Here, it's 14.3% of the population is 60 and older. Uh, sorry, is 0 to 14, so it's got a pretty good amount of people who are quite young, but it's getting smaller. So the older section of society has gotten bigger, and it's the same thing here. In 2000, it was 50% people 0 to 14. Now it's a lot smaller. So both countries get older, and Italy is noticeably older. So both are older, but Italy especially. Okay, so let's just take a look at the notes I've got here for this. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. But if you see here, the macro trend. Overall, both countries show an older population or slower birth rates. All right, so older population in both countries, although Italy is older, definitely. Then we look at it in 2000. Yemen, the main trend, mostly young, okay? 0 to 14 is the biggest trend. It's more than 50%, and there are very few people who are 60 plus. Italy is mostly older, not old, but older. 15 to 60 plus is much older, and there are very few for 0 to 14. So you can see that's kind of an interesting difference there. Quite young, quite old. Then in 2050, Yemen is older, 15 to 59 is now the biggest, and as I said, 60 plus is still small, but it's a major relative increase. In comparison, Italy also gets older, um, 15 to 59 is still the biggest, but it's now nearly equal to this one, to the 60 plus. 60 plus has nearly doubled and reached a similar level to 15 to 59. Now don't worry, if you looked it over and you didn't get all this information, that's fine. The main thing is to practice, okay? If you practice, you'll get better at this. But that is, again, the most important thing up here at the top is that overall trend, okay? Now I'm gonna use this structure, 2000 and 2050, to organize my paragraphs. After I write my brief introduction, I'll go one paragraph for 2000, one paragraph for 2050. It is very important to find some way to organize your task into paragraphs. Find an organizing principle, something that gives the paragraph its main focus. So let's take a look at a sample essay. The first part, again, this is that sentence you just need to get done quickly. Don't worry, you know, don't spend time thinking of uh, lots of different ways to say this. This sentence is really, it's important that you write it, 
but it really isn't doing any analysis. It's just introducing your writing. So I've said before, if you just copy it exactly from the text, it's not the best idea, but really, since it doesn't matter, uh, this sentence doesn't really affect your score. Um, and if you write it, if you write it the same as here, the IELTS examiners just won't count it in your word count. So don't worry about that. They will ignore this. The most important thing is right here. Your overall sentence. So you got the pie charts show the data pertaining to the ages of people in Yemen and Italy for 2000, as well as projections for 2050. Then your overall. Over the period, despite some differences in the age groups, both countries show an aging population. Okay, so I added that in. Despite some differences in the age groups, because again, they're both older, but there's big differences between these two. So this is something to keep in mind for any of the tasks you write, even if the results are similar, or even if the final numbers are similar, you can still highlight that there are some differences, and it's great with this word, despite. So despite and a noun. Now, on to the paragraphs. Remember, one paragraph, one idea. So your first sentence in that paragraph should be simple. The numbers in 2000 show noticeably different trends. Now, if I'm reading this, I know that you're only going to talk about the year 2000 in this paragraph. Have a short, simple, and clear sentence. Then I get into the trends. So this is the introduction. The overall trend, Yemen is predominantly young. Okay. Then support it with data. With 50.1% of its population under 14. So again, trend, data. Trend data, trend data, and then follow it up here with a comparison. Far higher, or which is far higher, than the rate in Italy, and I put the data here. So yes, you can put parentheses, there's nothing wrong with it, and it shows a little range instead of doing the same thing, with, with, at, at. You can use parentheses, just don't overuse them. And yes, here, beautiful example of a participle clause which is far higher than the rate in Italy. So again, I've talked about the main trend in Yemen and compared it with Italy. Then I talk about Italy. The majority of Italians, in contrast to Yemen, obviously, were aged between 15 and 59. And I put in the uh, data here. Italy also has a large number of people over 60, at 24.1%, so again here I've got at, which is far higher than Yemen's 3.6%. At this point, okay, so again, very nice, I make the comparison and I have trends and data. At this point, Italy is already showing an older than average population, which links back to this first overall. Okay, so I've got in this paragraph, a clear topic, a clear organizing principle. I have the trend followed by data and comparisons, and then I talk about overall that Italy is already showing an older than average population, which brings me very naturally to this next part. By 2050, by 2050, sorry, the population statistics will have changed quite markedly. They will have changed substantially. Now, this is a beautiful little grammar piece. By 2050, the statistics or the numbers, the data, will have changed. Now, that's a nice little way to use the future perfect. Uh, this will help, you know, show range in your grammar and possibly get you a higher grammar score. Uh, again, practice it. It's very important. Remember, by 2050, anytime you use by, you can then use will have changed. Do not say in will have changed. Always go by will have changed. Uh, in Yemen, people aged 59 
uh, sorry, 15 to 59 and 60 and older will have increased noticeably. So I'm going to that older population and I say that it's increased noticeably and then a participle clause reaching 57.3 and 5.7% respectively. So again, one, two, one, two, when you're reporting the data. Now here's a little extra bit. The former, meaning this one, the first, being the dominant group at this point. So I'm pointing out that 15 to 59 is now the biggest group in Yemen, which you can see over here. Um, then I come to the next point. Although still a small number of 60 plus, it is still a notable increase from its 2000 levels. So again, as I said, it's nearly doubled. And this is a really important thing to look at in the data. Even small changes can be large. Remember, if it goes from 2% to 4%, that's a small increase, but the numbers have doubled. So it's a good thing to point out. Although still a small number, it is a notable increase relative to the original numbers. Then I go on to Italy. In contrast, Italy's 15 to 59 population, despite still being the largest group, will have decreased to 46.2. So again, the trend and the data. And I've added this little part in here. So yes, even though the 15 to 59 group has dropped, it is still the largest. Again, that's one of the nice things in your writing is to show that small but important detail. That's how you get those higher scores. Moving on, a nice little semicolon here. However, its 60 plus will increase substantially, nearly doubling reaching 42.3%. Again, trend, tr trend with more detail, and then the data and the comparison, which is far higher than the same age range in Yemen. Now I could say I've, I've missed one thing here, and that is that the 15 to 59 and the 60 plus ages, they're pretty close to each other now. So it, it's come a little bit closer. That is something you could add in here that is missing. Um, in the end, I just stop with this final sentence. Both nations will thus show slower birth rates and an older population. Italy, however, being the older of the two. Um, so I've used being here, which means you want a comma here. Italy being the older of the two. If you want to have a subject verb, you would have to say this should be a period, and then you would say Italy, however, is the older of the two. All right. So you can take your time and look over that. Um, you know, take a you know, write it down, see how you feel about it. All these ideas should help you get those higher scores. Mostly, it's about your analysis. So please, whenever you're practicing. Take five minutes and do the analysis, especially when you're practicing. When you go into the exam, you want to be able to look at the data and very quickly find the macro trend as well as the smaller trends. Okay? This takes practice. It takes practice. Uh, hopefully you don't have the test tomorrow because that might just cause some confusion. Uh, so let's go over that. Just a little reminder of what we need to do here. Remember, five minutes to analyze. Identify the macro trend. All right, That's what really takes practice. Don't just say one increased and another decreased. Uh, the other point, support your micro trends with data. Don't just say what happened, but talk about the increase. Support with data. Uh, remember, in, when you're talking about the future, you can use the future perfect. The number will have increased. Perfect opportunity to show your grammar skills. And of course, as always, practice, 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 and get feedback. 
Uh, if you're taking an IELTS course or a PTE course or any kind of course, or you just have a friend, get feedback. That is especially useful for improving your grammar. Uh, not just learning new grammar, but making sure your basics, you know, your third person singular, your past tense, all of those things are as accurate as they can be. Anyway, that is all for this video. I hope you found it useful, and I will see you later. Please, if you have any comments or any questions, you can leave them in the comments section. Good luck!